tonight, we begin by posing a question to you. Do you own a home? If yes, that's a plus. I can imagine how many Nigerians who fall under the category of dreaming of owning their own home, especially with the rising housing deficit in the country that has lingered for a while. According to reports, the housing deficit in Nigeria has surged from 14 million units that was in 2010 to a staggering housing deficit of 28 million units presently. That is 100% increase within the time frame, requiring 21 trillion naira to address the deficit. The Central Bank of Nigeria indicates that only 10% of Nigerians aspiring to own homes can afford to do so. And this poses a major concern for the federal government. However, experts say it is a holistic approach from the federal government and the private sector to make housing affordable and accessible for the growing number of citizens who are in their need of housing. The federal government, under the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinumbu, recognizes the gaps in the housing sector and is putting modalities in place for affordable housing infrastructure development in the country. Already, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development has set plans in motion for social housing schemes to provide decent and affordable houses to cater to the housing needs of Nigerians. But what is the target in the next few years towards bridging gaps? And what role can the private sector play to bridge the housing deficit? On Weekend File tonight, our focus is bridging the housing gap. And our guest is Mr. Festus Adebayo, a housing development expert. We'll bring you situation reports from across states on solutions and progress made so far at a sub-national level. Thank you so much for joining us on Weekend File. I'm Ruth Aguile. First, let's bring you the news. <laughs> Nigerian women under the auspices of Women for Peace, Security and Social Inclusion Initiative are calling on all Nigerians, especially the youths, to embrace dialogue against the proposed protest slated to hold on the 1st of August. Ngozi Technico reports that the women, as mothers of the nation, made the appeal in Abuja as part of measures to prevent any possible casualties during the protest. Women from across the Federation converged on the Eagle Square recalled that though the August 1 protest may be tagged a peaceful one, but previous peaceful protests have been hijacked by criminals and disgruntled individuals to disrupt national peace and has led to deaths of Nigerians. When protests happen and it turns violent, women and children suffer the most. We are the most vulnerable. We are the one that may lose husband, lose our children, lose our sister, lose everything around us. If there's any proof of concept that a very wonderful planned protest can be hijacked, answers was a proof of concept of that. Uh, please and please, a dialogue is the best and is the way to go for this. The protest should be a no-no. If we allow the protest to hold, it will not only affect the presidency, it will affect the market women, the carpenters, the plumbers, those who have their own work. The unity and peaceful coexistence of Nigerians, the women say, supersedes any selfish ambition. In Abuja, Ngozi Technico, NT News. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs Zafanaya Jisalu has added his voice urging Nigerians, especially the youths, to stay away from the proposed nationwide protests due to inherent dangers associated with such gathering. Jisalu, who attended a function in Guzapi area of the FCT, used the opportunity to advise parents and guardians to urge their children and words not to be used as instruments to breach public peace in order to destroy and loot public property. The minister enumerated a number of intervention programs by government to bring succor to the citizens, including full autonomy granted to local governments. He urged Now with the situation we have on ground, 
prostate is not acceptable. Prostate is an old model. Dialogue is a, a new system that all Nigeria should do now. And I believe that so many are coming. We are going to have conference of uh, traditional rulers, conference of local government to give them so that every administration go back to the grassroots. Urge traditional and religious leaders to bring their influence to bear in persuading their subjects to remain peaceful and law-abiding as government is committed to addressing the socio-economic challenges. In the same vein, the Northern Youth Initiative for Peace and Good Governance has also enjoined Nigerians not to embark on protest or confrontation in view of the adverse effects of such to the peaceful coexistence to the country. Habibu Husseini reports that this was at a youth dialogue and town hall meeting held in Kano. With the theme, Empower Northern Youth Through Dialogue for Peace, Progress and Prosperity of the Country, is part of activities designed to kick against the planned nationwide protest. Organizers believe that government need to be supported to deliver on its mandate, appealing to Nigerians to say no to all actions that might disrupt the much enjoyed peace in the country. We want to educate our people here in Kanu to let them know that protest is not the answer. We can see what is happening in other African countries. We can see what is happening in the world. We can see war everywhere where people are moving out of their own comfort zone to become uh, what we call a uh, refugee in the, in the neighboring country. I'm not supporting the protests because we, they will cause crime, fight, steal people's properties. That's why. Um, I'm not uh, totally in support in this protest. I don't uh, think this protest will be the panacea will be the solution of this country. Papers were presented to sensitize youth on the dangers of protest and suggest ways to engage government to address challenges affecting the country. Still on issues around the planned protest, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetekun, at a meeting with squadron commanders, says the force acknowledges the rights of citizens to peaceful protest but available information at their disposal suggests that the planned protest is a deliberate attempt to destabilize the government and undermine public safety. IGP Egbetakum orders the squadron commanders to leverage their expertise to develop and execute a robust plan in addressing potential risk and challenges. Drawing lessons from the 2020 NSAS protest. Our paramount objective is to safeguard public safety, maintain law and order, and protect citizens' rights and well-being. I direct you to take ordinary measures to ensure that there is no breakdown of law and order in your respective jurisdiction. Strict adherence to established protocols, code of conduct, and the rule of law is paramount. The IGP also emphasized the importance of professionalism, civility and restraint, guided by the principles of fairness and justice while embracing a proactive approach, anticipating potential threats and taking preventive measures. Similarly, the Comptroller General of Immigration, Kemi Nandap, has directed zonal heads and other officers to intensify surveillance in view of the planned nationwide protests by some groups. She said, in keeping with its responsibility of safeguarding the nation's gateways, the heads of border commands and other officers are tasked to ensure that no foreign element can take advantage of the protest to destabilize the country directing temporary suspension of all leave applications to ensure maximum effectiveness at this period. We turn to other issues. Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Mamman says, the federal government prioritizes education, especially for youths with the provision of scholarships and grants, and it's, it is time for the states to do the same. The minister made a call when the Forum of Special Advisors on Students' Affairs to Governors visited the Ministry. He also appealed to the Forum to advise the students to shelve the planned protest. This 
council should be made a, given a direct access to the Federal Scholarship Board to enable us where opportunities are announced, we are able to relate them with immediate effect to our respective constituencies. The scholarships that each state is supposed to have a scholarship facility for students. And I know many of the states that have scholarships for uh, scholarships and grants for their students at that level. And then also, uh, as you mentioned, the federal government has close to 250,000 scholarships. This government this has been able to do so much. It's focused on making things better for us. And uh, let us not get them distracted. Let us not distract the president. 24,000 intending artisans have been deployed to 829 skills training centers across the country as part of the Skill Up Artisan Program that is super of the Industrial Training Fund. Musa Abubakar reports that the training is the foundation stage of the super program for intending artisans while other stages prepares them to provide better service delivery. While there's a little delay in the takeoff of second stage of the Skill Up Artisan Initiative, the Industrial Trading Fund is determined to hit the ground running, having put all the necessary things in place. At this briefing, the ITF is collaborating with the Chartered Institute of Project Managers of Nigeria to train shortlisted artisans on project management, amongst other skills relevant for them to compete favorably within and outside the country. Super will directly impact local economy and may generate one million in direct, new direct and indirect jobs within its first two years of implementation. Super is a giant leap which will breed the skilled artisan who will fill up job opportunities abroad. Project management is key to the artisans you will begin to see a new level of artisans in Nigeria as you have never seen before. Trainees are said to receive a stipend every month to support their transportation as well as get training materials at no cost under the foundation training stage. Training commences on Monday 5th of August. The SUPA program is determined to achieve the skilling up of 10 million artisans annually. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar. NT News. The NNBC Limited has attributed the tightness in fuel supply and distribution witnessed in some parts of Lagos and the Federal Capital Territory to a hitch in the discharge operations of a couple of vessels. A statement by Olufemi Shonaye, Chief Corporate Communications Officer, says the NNPC Limited has given an assurance that the company is working round the clock with stakeholders to resolve the situation and restore normalcy in operations. In a bid to appreciate its numerous customers in Ilari and sell its products to others across Guara State, Good Mama Detergent, one of the leading detergent companies in Nigeria, has given out cash gifts and all the prizes to its customers for their patronage. The open market fashion show organized by the company is also to deepen manufacturer customer relationship while also engaging stakeholders in Good Mama's activities. Ahmed Fulani's report is here presented. The open market fashion show held at Baboku Market in Ilori attracted customers from all walks of life. Good Mama Detergent, a leading brand of Eco Supreme Resources Nigeria Limited, organized the open market fashion show nationwide to show gratitude to Good Mama ambassadors and stakeholders in various markets. The Ninja Queen open market fashion show campaign is also to emphasize the company's commitment towards recognizing the indomitable spirit of Nigerian women and to connect with their esteemed customers and contributors who are primarily women across Nigeria. Here in Lauren, fashion parade and other competitions such as best dress in clothes category, best head tie, best agile category and best makeup category were contested for by the market women. Brand manager 
Good Mama Detergent Ramata Aruna told the gathering that the innovation, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, created avenue to appreciate the hardworking women who combine their aspirations with family tasks. She assured the customers that the company will continue to improve its services for maximum satisfaction. We want to use this medium to celebrate our stakeholders, which are our wholesalers, our retailers, our distributors. Most of them are mothers and they are courageous women. They have their aspirations, they have their goals. But with that, they still have that, you know, they still have to prioritize what we call family responsibilities. So we say, oh, let's use this medium to celebrate them. Let's come to um, Ilori and say, ah, we appreciate you mothers, we celebrate you, and we want you to unwind. These are beautiful women who, because of the nature of their jobs, may not uh, come out to show their beauty on a daily basis. But today, as you can see from the people who are participating in the fashion show, we have a lot of beautiful people, beautiful people selling good mama. Those who match winners of the various contests were appreciative of the giveaway prizes. I'm so excited when I collect some of this money, this amount of money. They entice people, they motivate people, they increase the product. Launched in Nigeria to provide an effective and fragrant detergent at affordable prices, Good Mama Detergent has earned the trust of Nigerian consumers who promised to always patronize all Good Mama's products. For these customers, the experiences of the open market fashion show will continue to resonate in their memories for a long time. President Bola Tinubu extends his condolences to the family of the late Senator Ifan Yoruba. In a statement, the president describes the deceased as a renowned businessman and politician who was the senator for Anambra South Senatorial District at the National Assembly. He commiserates with Uba's friends, colleagues, and the government and people of Anambra State over the sad loss and prayed for the repose of the departed lawmaker. In the same vein, the Nadran Senate also mourns the demise of Senator Ifan Yomba, who, until his death, represented Anambra South Senatorial District in the 10th Senate. In a statement, Chairman Senate Committee on Media, Yemi Adara Modu says the President of the Senate, Gatswe Lakpabio, expresses deep shock at the passing of Senator Uba, a dedicated legislator whose contributions have left indelible mark on the nation. The Deputy President of the Senate, Barao Jibrin, the Southern Senators Forum, and all the members of the 10th Senate also extend sympathy to Senator Uba's family, his constituents, as well as the government and people of Anambra State. Meanwhile, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, has also expressed shock over the death of Senator Ifan Uba. The Speaker recalls the late Senator recently donated funds supporting the APC in Anambra State and also celebrated the celebration, the creation rather, of the Southeast Development Commission a few days ago. Speaker Abbas extends condolences to the Uba family, government and people of Anambra State as well as the Senate over the huge loss. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll begin a conversation on bridging the housing gap. Please stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned. And just before we delve right into our discussion on bridging the housing gap, we'll bring you some reports. Let's know what's happening across um, housing deficit and its effect on the masses is a challenge that should be tackled, especially now that Nigeria's housing deficit is estimated at 28 million. In this report, Francis Udojo takes a look at the major policy interventions of the present administration towards tackling the challenges of housing deficit in Nigeria. The presidential target for the Ministry of Housing is to build at least 20,000 housing units per year but the ministry has decided to push it further with plans to deliver 50,000 houses in the first phase of the renewed hope cities and estates. This plan is to ensure that the houses are completed, the houses are sold to Nigerians to take position before the year ends. The Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria provides a 100 billion Naira optical guarantee to make this happen. Um, this, this guarantee was provided to the consortium of developers so that they can raise funding 
for this project. The housing gap is caused by many things. One of them is basically the financial part, but another thing is actually the ability of the market to produce enough housing. The Minister of Housing said Nigeria will need 5.5 trillion per annum. He believes with the support of stakeholders, especially the lawmakers, the country will be able to reduce the surging housing deficit significantly. Francis Udojo, NT News. Well, Nigeria still has a lot to do in order to gain more mileage in covering the housing deficit. Experts we hear say it will require more than 20 trillion naira to cover, uh, well, a feat that can only be achieved through the involvement of the private sector. Let's hear from Joel Papola. Housing after food and clothing tops the charts in the hierarchy of human needs, a basic necessity that not everyone can afford. Thus, many live a lifetime of being at the mercy of landlords. Most Nigerians who are lucky to have a house of their own, according to experts, went through a tedious process to acquire land and build in piecemeal. To miss the housing deficit, stakeholders say a public-private partnership is inevitable, but the interest rate, especially in commercial banks, is not business-friendly. Government will need to partner with uh, uh, private investors, and that is the uh, private developers, and uh, that uh, partnership must also carry the assurance of protection of their interests. The cost of even getting an approval, if you are building a house now, <laughs> is alarming. While there are loan facilities provided by the Federal Mortgage Bank with single-digit interest rates, experts say assessing the credit facility is like a camel passing through the high of the needle. With the renewed hope housing scheme ongoing in all the geopolitical zones in the country, it is expected that the housing deficit will be reduced. In Lagos, Joel Mukbola, NC News. All right, let's bring in our guests to start a conversation. We have in the studio Mr. Festus Adebayo, a housing development expert. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Adebayo. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Great. Um, sure, you're not happy about the number we're seeing for housing deficit, um, 28 million. That's not pleasant. And this is one issue that has lingered for a very long time. Um, we've seen the numbers keep changing. Why are we still talking about Nigeria now at that margin? Let me start by uh, commending the federal government in the area of establishing a stay-alone Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. I believe that was done as a result of our proactive advocacy on the need for government to put more attention to the issue of housing Nigerians. And having said that, I must also commend the government for putting an efficient expert to manage that ministry in person of the architect Ahmed. Dangewa. And I must also appreciate Mr. President for the presidential endorsement that he gave to housing during the launching of Renew Hope, where he said, and I quote, every Nigerian deserve a home. That statement has been in my mind for a very long time. And all that we need, I will use this evening to do, is to call for the government's political will to address the provision of housing so we can get to those people that really need the houses. I'm aware that a new hope has gone to many states. Very commendable. But I must say, Mentioning 28 million or 22 million or 18 million, I would not like to be part of that because the country does not have a credible data mm. to tell us the exact figure of the housing deficit we have in our country. We don't even have information on the household income of civil servants so that it can guide us or guide the government on the kind of houses that the government 
will be building. The last one week, we have been focusing on the subject at the African International Housing Show, financing the housing we need. So the bigger challenge on ground is financing. I don't know if the government have the money to provide these houses. Okay, uh, Mr. Adebayo, I like the fact you ended with that rhetoric question that if the government has the money, which brings the private sector into this. You have been involved in engaging, you know, the federal government. You're from the private sector. You've been engaging the government on favorable reforms, you know, that will aid affordable housing for Nigerians. Now, affordability and accessibility has been, you know, part of the challenge. What role do you think um, private sector can play? Um, we saw the Renewed Hope um, estates, cities, and that's the target is 20,000 units per year, we're hearing. But that's a huge feat that will require support, don't you think so? The way to go is public-private partnership. Okay. And I must use this opportunity to let Nigerians know that the biggest task of the government is to create an enabling, an enabling environment for the so-called private sector involvement. I must use this opportunity to announce that some state government are not making housing development to thrive. I have one or two, three states where for you to get a building approval as an investor in real estate, you have to pass through various bottlenecks that is not less than 17, 16, 15 stages. So for the private sector to thrive, the government on the other side must so interest that they are interested in housing Nigeria, not lift service, not semantics. The private, the government must create policies that we make an investor that brings his money, that we protect that investment. That is key. Recently, a state mentioned that over 80% of houses in that state don't have building approval. These are not good message for any investor. So the main responsibility of the government, the need for government to work with the private sector, cannot be overemphasized. In fact, that is the way to go. Give us the land. And in that area, there's a lead to, to what the federal government can do. The land is in the hand of the state governors. And therefore, I want to use this opportunity to call on the state governors that they are, the need for them to be housing friendly cannot be overemphasized because of the importance of housing. When you give them a home, a place to stay, when they get to the office, they will be productive. Hmm. If you give them a place to stay, the number of times they'll be going to a hospital will reduce. If you give them a place to stay, corruption will be reduced. We have found out that corruption in the civil service among workers is also a product of when they have a particular thing to buy and their salary cannot, have, cannot take care of it, no affordability. Hmm. How many civil servants can afford a house of 20 million. Let me tell me the level. And that is where I am going to call on the federal government, because we are talking of PPP, government and the private sector working together. Government, please make land accessible. Governments in the states, stop using building approvals as a way to generate revenue. I remember I read it in the news some weeks ago that the states gave the Ministry of Physical Planning a particular amount of target for a year. You can't promote affordable housing through this because that very money they are paying, the, the private developer, we have to put it on the cost of the houses. Okay. So there are a lot of problems. Indeed. Um. All right. Um, but of course, access to credit schemes is also one of the viable means, you know, to address this um, deficit. But we'll pick up with the conversation, Mr. Adebayo. We have to take a break. We'll be back. Please stay tuned. Glad to know you're there. Uh, before we continue the conversation with our guests, we want to show you what happened in Casino State um, during an inspection of 250 housing units, which is under construction in Casino State. Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed 
Musa Dengewa. Reaffirm the project's potential to create employment opportunities for millions of Nigerians. Underscoring the government's dedication to driving socio-economic development. Let's hear more from Awel Haliro. The Renew Top Housing Estate Project is underway in 13 states across the Federation, aiming to provide affordable housing to Nigerians. This ambitious project is a key component of President Bola Tinebu's Renewed Hope Agenda. During an inspection of the Katsana State Project site, Minister of Housing and Urban Development Ahmed Musa Dengiwa expressed satisfaction with the progress made so far. From now on, they need to know that they have reached a stage where we need a very good workmanship, especially when it comes to finishing. So they should speed up their work and ensure that uh, they have a very quality finishing. The first phase of the project is expected to be completed within three months. will deliver 3,250 housing units across the 13 states. We're really, really trying our best to see that we do what we're actually given to. This is a significant step towards addressing the country's housing deficit and providing shelter for millions of Nigerians. In Kasana, Awal Halleru, NTA News. All right, let's bring in Mr. Festus Adebayo. Uh, Mr. Adebayo, you just saw the report from Casino State, um, where the Minister there of Housing and Urban Development is supervising ongoing project, part of the Renewed Hope Initiative. Um, for you, as a private sector, what would you say you've enjoyed, you know, going by federal government's intervention, you know, in bridging that housing deficit? Yes, to start with, in the past, I must say, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is one of the intervention, and that is through the Natural Housing Fund to enable Nigerians to own a home of their dream. Beyond that, we clamor for the establishment of a social housing institution, which is also another intervention. Family Homes Fund was established. That's, that's an intervention. We also requested that we need a mortgage refinance. Hmm. Nigeria Mogheri Finance Company was also established. This is part of the intervention government have been doing. And as you can see the minister there, hmm. just as I told you earlier, he's an efficient minister and is doing the job checking the whole thing. So the era of having houses that are substandard, we are go he's going to end it because an architect, he will ensure that proper and the quality of houses are standard. But I must say it clearly. We still need intervention. The economic situation in the country is threatening the initial interventions. The Federal Market Bank of Nigeria needs to be recapitalized. Family home funds need more support in the area of financing because the kind of houses the family home fund builds are houses below 10 million naira. You imagine that kind of houses in this present economy. The federal government must also go further to strengthen Nigeria Building and Road Research Institute because we need an alternative building materials. Okay, so today, Mr. Adebayo, I, I like what you just said now that the, the, the houses being built uh, less than 10 million when it comes to that aspect of the from the from the government. But the private sector, you talked about PPP. You've been hitting on PPP, public-private partnership. Now, sometimes you see this public-private partnership, then the houses are skyrocketed. Uh, skyrocketed. Uh, that's talking, talking about the prices now. Um, how can the private sector also help federal government reduce this burden? Because you want to buy a house now, and they tell you it's an initiative of public-private, but you still cannot, cannot afford it as a civil servant. So the private sector's role to reduce talking about incentives. The way forward is a private sector is into the business of real estate is to make money. That is the main objective, and that is to make profit in whatever investment. But there are still some private sector who believe in affordable housing, who believe in social housing, and they've been doing that for a period of time. Hmm. So the government needs to identify them, and after identifying them, provide them, look at their previous achievement, and then those people will be ready to work with the government with the motive that there will be no profit, or necessary profit margin. Meaning, with that, we can bring down the prices of some of those houses. And beyond that, the government must also champion the use of local building material. Nigeria Building Research Institute must commercialize some of their research, research findings so that we can, for the, another time or for the first time, 
have a house that is ordering percent local building material. That is the only way. With the economy in the country now, where the interest rate is 36 percent, and the developers have to go to bank, a majority of the commercial banks are not friendly. Only NM, only Federal Mortgage Bank is the one that is offering 6 percent. So it is not going to be an easy thing. Or the only way is for the government to come hmm. with subsidy. Please allow me to say this. Recently, the Honorable Minister for Health reported to Mr. President that with the increase in changes in the prices of dollar, hmm. majority of the drug that people are using, the prices have gone up beyond the affordability. Then the president approved that they should set up some local manufacturers. Okay. So on that note, federal government must subsidize. Okay. Federal government must go beyond every... They must support the renewal hope with subsidy. That okay. is my request. All right. Um, noted, Mr. Adebayo, and I'm sure those concerned have taken your plea into consideration. But most importantly, Nigerians just want affordable housing. housing. All right. He is a housing development expert, and we do appreciate your time on Weekend File. Let's take another break. We're back in a moment. Thank you for staying tuned. Um, let's bring you news making round on the global scene. Nijaz Junta gathered thousands of people in the capital in May to celebrate the first anniversary of coup in the country. The crowd, dressed in clothes bearing photos of regime members, chanted the name of the Junta chief, Abdurrahman Tiani. Francis Udojo will bring us more details. Tiani arrived to the beat of a traditional drum to greet attendees, but did not address the crowd. The July 26 school anniversary was declared a public holiday. After taking power, the junta expelled French forces last year while the departure of U.S. troops is expected to be finalized in August. Niger has also distanced itself from some West African nations serving ties with the regional bloc ECOWAS, but it has formed a confederation with military leaders ruling Burkina Faso and Mali. In another development, former Bolivian President Evo Morales has warned of potential violence if he is blocked from running for office for a fifth term in the forthcoming 2025 presidential election. Morales, Bolivia's first indigenous president, was extremely popular until he tried to bypass the constitution and seek a fourth term in office in 2019. The leftist won the vote but was forced to resign amid deadly protest over alleged election fraud. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands are expected to be affected by delays this weekend as three out of ten French high-speed trains were cancelled on Saturday on routes hit by a series of coordinated arson attacks. French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal said security forces continue to search for saboteurs responsible. Francis Udojo, NT News. All right, talking sports now. You know, yesterday the world was at a standstill following the opening spectacular ceremony for the Paris 2024 Olympics. Here is our sports correspondent, Francisca, to tell us what has played out today. Francisca. Welcome to Sports Update. Table tennis star Olajide Omotayo has become the first team Nigerian athlete to exit the 2024 Paris Olympic Games as he lost his round of 64 game against Noshad Olamian of Iran in the singles category. Omotayo took the first set 11-6 but lost the, ne the next four sets as his 4-1 defeat marked the end of the road for him. Africa's number one Arena Kodri is currently taking on Eduard Ionesco of Romania also in the men's singles. Meanwhile, the senior women's national football team Super Falcons will be out for their first point of Paris 2024 when they take on world champion Spain on Sunday evening. The coach Randy Baum, Nigeria's Super Sand Eagles have failed in their bid to qualify for Africa Beach Soccer, Africa Beach Soccer Cup in Egypt after losing 5-4 to Mauritania in their return fixture of their qualifying tie. The Sand Eagles would just made a return to continental competition after a four-year break won the first leg 5-4 last Saturday, but fell to shots at, well, fell to shot at home with Mauritania qualifying on a way goal rule for the tie 
ended 1010 on aggregates. Kaduna based Kada Stars and Kada Queens are winners of National Hockey League at Amadu Bello Stadium in Kaduna. Kada Stars beat Niger Flickers 5-3 in the men's final, while Kada Queens secured a two-new victory over Plato Queens in their finalist. While rep in the finalists will represent Nigeria at Africa Cup for clubs championship in Zimbabwe come December. He as a board, we're going to make sure the letters go out early to the clubs, most especially to uh, to Kada, to Plateau, and then to Ninja, for the state government to know right the right right ahead that they need to sponsor this team early to start preparing for the to tournament. Ten teams competed in the male category, while ten teams vied for honours in the female category. Meanwhile, after the unveiling of mascots for the fourth Federal Ministry of Education sector game by Minister of State Education Tanko Sununu in Abuja, 23 teams will compete in the week-long event at the Abubaka Tafawa Belewa Stadium, Bauchi, from August 3 to 10. Organizers will reveal the game's compass, disclose that athletes will vie for honors in 13 sports, including football, where the Joint Admission and the Matriculation Board and the National Library of Nigeria were, were seated in Group A and B. Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, U UBEC, National University Commission, NCCE, National Library of Nigeria, Federal Ministry of Education Headquarters, Tech Fund, and of course, I'll be coordinating with you when it gets up. Sporting Dreams will continue the quest to secure top flight football in Nigeria as they overcome New Don Tundil in the final of the FCT Super 4 tournament on Saturday. Dreams will now represent the FCT in the Zuna playoffs of the Nationwide League on Division 2 in Lafia with a ticket to NLO Division in focus. Well, that's the size of our package. It's back to Ruth. Thank you very much, Francisca, for that sport and update. And you know, on the calm, on the rain or sunshine, spots must go on, right? But let's find out how tomorrow's weather will fare. And you're welcome to Sunday's weather forecast. The northern region of the country is expected to experience isolated thunderstorms during the morning and later during the afternoon and evening hours to most parts of the region. To the north central, intermittent rains accompanied with thunder is expected, while down south cloudy skies are expected with prospect of morning rains to parts of Cross River, Aquaibom, as well as parts of Ekiti and Oyo State. As we go into the afternoon and evening hours, isolated rains are anticipated to the southern and the north central region of the country. That's our bit from here. I am Theodora Itun. Thank you for watching. Now that you know, don't forget to plan. And that's Weekend File. Thank you so much for your company. Do have a good night rest. I'm Ruth Aguilera.